Good morning. I'd like to welcome all of you to church today. Um, Pastor Enno has tested positive for COVID, so we're fill, filling in. And uh, I think he's doing okay, but he's not going to be here for a while. So, our we'll have. The, are you going to play the prelude now, or was that it? Are you playing more music before we start the service? Okay.
Thank you. We have words to enter worship. People who love the morning, you can read along with me. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. People who love the afternoon. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants, yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with seed in it. And it was so, and God saw that it was good. People who love the evening. Then God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so, and God saw that it was good. People who love the night. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, all the wild animals, and over everything that creeps upon the earth. And it was so. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed, it was very good. The words of lament can read with me. Merciful God, we lament for what cannot be stopped. We lament for what cannot be changed. We lament for what cannot be undone. We lament for what cannot be. Creating and creating God of justice, compassion and resurrection. Help us to stop, change, undo, and let it be. Amen. The words of blessing today are based on Psalm 148. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God, all angels. Praise God, all heavenly host. Praise God, sun and moon. Praise God, all the shining stars. Praise God, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For God spoke, and they were created. God established them forever and ever, and fixed their boundaries, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling the creation, mountains and hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things, and flying birds, leaders of the earth and all peoples, privileged and poor of the earth, young people, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God's love is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. God, raise up a horn for the people. Praise all the faithful, for the people who are close to God. Hallelujah. It's a custom in our congregation to light our peace candle during worship as a witness to the Prince of Peace and our communal intention to be peacemakers as a just peace church. This poem is by John Agard entitled Inheritance. If we, the children of the meek, should inherit an earth whose rainforest lungs breathe a tale of waste, an earth where the ailing sea shudders in its own slick. 
If we, the children of the meek, should inherit an earth where the grass grows nostalgic at the mere mention of green, and the sky looks out of its depth when reminded of blue. If we, the children of the meek, should inherit such an earth, then we ask of the future one question. Should we dance or break into gnashing of teeth at the news of our inheritance? Please pass the piece. The scripture readings this morning first is from the book of John, chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. I'll put that down. Uh, and this is from the message. When Judas had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is seen for who he is, and God seen for who he is in him. The moment God is seen in him, God's glory will be on display. In glorifying him, he himself is glorified, glory all around. Children, I am with you only for a short time longer. You are going to look high and low for me, but just as I told the Jews, I'm telling you, where I go, you are not able to come. Let me give you a new command. Love one another. In the same way I loved you, you love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples when they see the love you have for each other. And the second reading is from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 6, the New, new Revised Standard Version. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice coming from the throne saying, see, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them. They will be God's peoples and God's self will be with them and be their God. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, God said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then God said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. This is the word of the Lord. First, I'll bring this up. How's that? Okay, okay, you're all kind of a behind a fog behind these glasses. But good morning. Good morning. Um, it says the children's sermon or message right now based on love. Um, and I also have a Bible here for one of the youngsters that we thought might be here today, but I don't see Elliot or his family here. Um, so we won't pass out his Bible, but this is all very last minute. Um, and thanks be to God that we can all just come together. As we were driving down here, I said, you know, John, I think I could do the children's message um, based on love, but I would rename it uh, Love as a Supernatural Power. For kids, we all have our superhero. And that translates into our superheroes as we're in adulthood as well. So who are your superheroes? First of all, let's think about the superpowers. 
what is the most powerful energy in the universe? Love. Unconditional love is the most powerful source of energy in the universe. And who is that source? God. So when we think about our superpowers and the most powerful energy in the universe, we can think about how we can harness that for our own selves. Because guess what? Each and every one of us has that superpower right in our hearts. Our hearts are filled with unconditional love and we can use that superpower here on earth. Therein lies my children's message. <laughs> Thanks for that. And now to the next part of this, Eno. Um, if I had a little more time, I could study the character that I'm about to play. Um, I have to tell you that it seemed like, I, was, I told a few of you, this is like the, the scene of Jesus Christ Superstar. We've all been dropped off by the bus in the front, and we have this script, and who's going to do this part, and who's going to do that part, and praise God, here we go. As I read Eno's message that he sent to me last night, I realized he did it in his voice, the way he knows how to preach. Like I should have a flip chart up there and standing up there and I should study the character and have his moves. Um, so I'll do the best I can in my voice. But may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts bring to each one of us a message from God as it is written for us this day. I do know to do this part. <laughs> to Anno. <laughs> okay. Here we go. In the book, Neither Wolf Nor Dog, the author from Bemidji is called to help a Lakota elder get his words down. After taking the elder's notes and trying to put it together in book form, they decided that this wasn't how the book was going to go. So they just started hanging out and traveling together. And once in a while, the elder of whom we never know his name, would start off on stories, philosophies, his view of the world. Asked why he was doing this now, he replied, just as the grass covers scars on the earth, it is time for us to forgive the white man and build a better relationship. In the book, Black Elk Speaks, he talks about the seventh generation, which will rise up and set the world, not just Native Americans, on a good path. In the 1990s, there were many who claimed that the generation being born would heal the world. I, Eno, remember around 2012, there was much talk about the Mayan calendar. It was coming to an end, and that was to signify the ending of the world. Remember that? Though those who were knowledgeable and followed the calendar, culture, and religion weren't as terrified, for they knew that their calendar is circular, not linear, and they would just be starting something new. In our study book, Rooted and Rising, Voices of Courage in Time of Crisis, the authors each shared some experience and hope in our time. One native essayist called out Western Christianity on how we came into this land and went 
out of our way to not learn anything from those who lived here before. We viewed our job was to civilize the nations living here and saving their souls. He didn't have much hope for the world or Western civilization. If we, settlers, explorers, countries, and armies would have approached them as equals, as fellow children of God, things would have, could have, been much different than in the world we are living in now. Just as many of the prophecies in the Bible and elsewhere contain lots of violence, judgments, and naming of the sins of the people, the nations, and the world, most end on a good note of, and they lived happily ever after. After many plagues, celestial happenings, armies, wars, pestilence, betrayal, sea monsters, everything horrific, it's coming to the end. There are now signs of love, faith, hope, and peace. There are new beginnings and laughter and joy. It's quite the trip down Looney Lane to listen to some people who believe that this is a forecast. We will have these troubles, then more troubles, then Jesus will reign for a thousand years of peace, and then there will be the final battle where Satan and all his minions will be forever vanquished. How does the rapture fit in with that? It depends on which church you go to. But as we were saying last week, this prophecy was not looking into the hundreds or thousands of years in the future, but it was addressing what was going on with the early Christian church at the end of the first century under the authority and persecution of the Roman rules. But we are jumping to the back of the book, the back of the Bible, to see how things end. There's no more suffering, dying, or tears of sorrow. All things are made new. So the scars of mining, of wars, of deforestation, of leveling mountains for coal, flooding fertile valleys for dams, killing of animal species, are all now in the past. Just something to ponder. Would they bring back the dinosaurs? We who are raised from the dead and come down from heaven will now live in our utopian version of God's kingdom. We got to go through some stuff first, but we'll get there. Here is where the rubber meets the road. How, if this is even vaguely true, are we going to get there? There is one school of theology in our religion that says that God created the world in six days and God will snap his fingers like a genie with his angels fighting on to defeat all that is bad and the old heaven and the earth pass away and the new one descends. That's right, we don't spend eternity up in heaven, but God comes down here among us finally and fully. Since this world is giving under our dominion, we should use it up, not care for it, enrich ourselves because a new one is on the way. I, Pastor Enno, not me, noticed something for the first time this week as I was studying and preparing and putting the first creation story into our words to enter worship. Pastor Enno noticed that we are given dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle and wild animals, but we are not given dominion of the world itself. We do not have the absolute right to do what we want with this planet. The world is the Lord's and the fullness thereof is repeated quite a lot in our Bible. Not ours, it ain't ours. Another school of theology in our religion 
affirms that God has a hand in creation. And just as we proclaim that God is still speaking, we can also affirm that God is still creating. We may have a few billion years left as a human species on this planet. Sometime, somehow, in some way, we will be doing it better in letting go of our fear, our hate, our divisiveness, our egos, and our psychoses of trying to separate humankind from the rest of the species that live and the world itself. The world being healed and made new is not by some genie in the sky, but in the Trinity working through and with the churches and the people through other religions, countries, and animals, and through the grass and the trees themselves. What the earth needs most from us is to stop our pollution, whether it be CO2, plastic, new parking lots, or toxic chemicals dumped in our waterways. The world and the planet, the life of the planet, would bounce back a lot quicker than most people would think. So how do we get to this new heaven and new earth? We listen to the earth. As the elder tells the writer in neither wolf nor dog. As the psalmist says in Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God. And the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. We listen and then we love our neighbors, all life and the planet itself. We listen and we love and then we speak for those who can't speak. We speak of the new creation that is coming into the world. We speak of a better future and the absolute goodness of God and all of God's creation. We listen, we love, we speak, and we act. We do what we can do in our homes, our church, our community, our nation, and the world, inspiring others to join toward this new creation. To quote Belinda Carlisle, oh baby, do you know what that's worth? Ooh, heaven is a place on earth. They say in heaven, love comes first. We'll make heaven a place on earth. Ooh, heaven is a place on earth. Amen.
Thank you, Francie. We come to a time of prayer, the people's prayer, the pastoral prayer, the Lord's prayer. John has a microphone and let's start with uh, sharing some joys that we have. My first joy is I made it through that sermon. <laughs> Linda has one. I just want to say what a joy it is to hear Francie play. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. I was able to spend a couple of days this week with uh, a group of friends that I've known for over 50 years, and we haven't seen each other for a couple of years because of the pandemic. So it was really lovely mm. to, to just be together and laugh a lot. I have to say the joy yesterday of just being outdoors all day long and the return of birds and waves of warbler and rushing water and whoa. I have a similar note in ice is out <laughs> <laughs> and the hummingbirds and the loons are back so it's a sure sign that uh, God is blessing us as we, as we move forward with without winter <laughs> <laughs> couple of joys. One, um, to be a member of a church where suddenly something happens that none of us control, like our pastor getting COVID, and people just say, I'm there for whatever you need. Um, so grateful to be a part of this community. Truly special people. Second joy is yesterday marked 12 years since I married my best friend. Are there concerns that you'd like to raise? Those that are in your heart and those you'd like to share out loud. Bob, you can get the microphone to him. Um, sorry to double dip, but asking for <laughs> prayers for the friends and families of the victims in Buffalo, New York. And as controversial as this may be, I don't know. Also pray for, um, those of us, those of our country who are responsible for doing these things, um, of having the courage to finally pass some laws that maybe make a few of these, um, to keep a few of these at least from happening. Mm -hmm. I would say prayers for the people of Ukraine and also the people from Russia. This is a major, major thing that's happening. And I, I think we could all keep it in our prayers every day and hopefully it'll, it'll end soon. And it, Carol. Prayers, of course, for Eno and Kyleen and for um, mild illness, if it has to be illness and quick healing. Let us come into a time of prayer. Oh God, source of unconditional love in the universe. We love this planet. We love the signs of spring. We love reunions with friends. We love the gifts that you have given to the people gathered here. We love the love that we have for one another and the celebration of such love. And into every joy, there's always a matching concern. We pray for the earth. We pray for the people who suffer 
especially now the people of Ukraine and Russia. We pray for those who are dealing with COVID, Pastor Enno and Kyleen, Steve, who is still recovering. And we pray for the people on our prayer list, Meredith, Vicki, Paulette, Larry, Chris, Mike, John, Gwen, Nona, Lou, and Bev. Pray that you meet their needs where they are, bringing a smile to their face, knowing that they are loved. And now we join together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, in whose image we are created, sacred is your name. Let the sacred come, let the sacred be done, and in this world, as in heaven, give all life its daily sustenance. Forgive us our dominion domination ways, as we forgive those who demean us. Lead us not on this path of global climate destruction, but deliver the fish, the birds, the animals, and plants from our destructive ways. For yours is the earth, the life, and the sacred, now and into eternity. Amen. Our time of giving, I love that we have this measure of our faithfulness printed in the bulletin. Um, especially when it says, according to guideposts, our budget donations and income should be 55000 and right now they're close to 70000 We know that's all a picture in time, and it's a really nice picture. May we all keep up our faithfulness with our dollars. Um, and we all know how we can give, right? All the different ways, and there's usually a basket out front if you have a little bit of change in your pocket on your way out, just today. Um, we're gonna do a doxology. Would you like to play the doxology, Francie? And you can sing it in your heart, because we don't have the words printed, and we're not singing out loud, but we might know the words. Who needs the word? John, do you want to do uh, news of God at work in our congregation and community? Morning. Uh, it's really interesting when you look at all of the activities that are noted in the bulletin. Can't hear you, John. You might have to come up here. I got it. And guess what? None of the activities have to stop. There will be a couple of challenges. I think uh, Tai Chi via Zoom will be really interesting. And maybe the harbor, maybe harbor view. But again, it, I think it really speaks to, as Bob said, the, uh, just the, the grace of everybody that has in this congregation to keep things going. I would ha highlight that the board of directors will meet on Wednesday. And we do welcome anyone who would like to Join us via via Zoom for this important meeting as we move forward. And that's, that's the announcement I have. Does anyone else have an announcement? This is important. Lois brought donuts, and they'll be outside for your pleasure. I was going to say that. <laughs> 
So today from two to four is the open house, the farewell for Kay Grinland over at the Rec Park Hall. So it's an open house, two to four. We've got masks for people who want to wear masks and it'll be fun. So thanks. Is that indoors, Nancy? It is, it's indoors and, and out. Okay. Yeah. Any other announcements? Thank you. Oh, Lois has one. Some lady, and I can't come up with her name. Her husband died a couple years ago, and the funeral will be will be here at uh, our oh. church. Eleanor Schoberg. There you go. Okay. I believe that's on the twenty fourth. The Schoberg funeral will be here on the 24th. I'm sure we'll have Two o'clock on the 24th, yeah. May 24th, for Eleanor Schoberg's um, funeral or remembrance. Thanks for that, Lois. And with that, let's enjoy some music before our benediction. Thank you. see all the smiles under the masks. <laughs> and so now as we get ready to go, may you listen, love, and speak through your heart with the unconditional power of God's love so that we might be who we are called to be in our hearts and in this world. May God go with you. Amen. <laughs>